this one fundamental change has a dramatic effect on how God's angels care for us. All right. Dramatic effect. Oh, good. So it's going to be uh, the way we want what everyone was hoping for. Here we go. So is it time, Rick, to talk about it? Like you know, like this angel sitting here on my shoulder. It, is that what we're getting into here? Uh, no. <laughs> what we're getting into is looking at how it works in the New Testament. And But see, Jonathan, that's where we end up going because we are so used to mixing fact with fiction and fantasy that, and, and look, look on your phone. You can't tell if some things are real or not. And we get stuck in that. But we don't want to get stuck in that blurred world when we're looking at the mighty angels of God. We need to look at them with the reverence that God sends them out for their, their missions and, and their protection of us. So along the same lines as the Old Testament, God's spiritual beings were sent as angels to foretell miraculous world-changing events in the New Testament. So, Jonathan, let's define angels and then let's get started with that. Well, in the New Testament, angel means to bring tidings, a messenger, by implication, a pastor. Let's go first to the unlikely birth of John the Baptist, Luke 1, 18 and 19. Zacharias said to the angel, how will I know this for certain? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. That's a very powerful interaction. Zacharias is wondering, and Gabriel basically says, okay, you better be quiet. I'm Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. And I'll tell you, Jonathan, that sends chills up anybody's spine if you, if you, if you realize the depth and the power of that. So Gabriel is again <laughs> doing God's work here with Zacharias. Next, the impossible begettal and birth of Jesus, Luke 1, 26 through 33. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin named Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. Let me pause there. Gabriel is commissioned with the preparation and safety of the Messiah. Continuing, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive and bear a son and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. So again, Gabriel appears. Gabriel, you wonder, you got to wonder about who Gabriel is, you know, in terms of his angelic, his spiritual being and all of that. But, but think about this. Gabriel was, at, was there with Daniel. And now this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, and Gabriel appears here. And it doesn't sound like he's old and decrepit. You know, Gabriel is ageless, and he gives you a sense of this agelessness of the power of these representatives of Almighty God. And what is he here to do? He's here to put things in order to show God's plan is now taking another step. That's what he was telling Daniel back then, and that's what he's telling Zacharias. That's what he's telling Mary. God's plan is moving forward. See, these kinds of angelic visits were unexpected. And let's pause there because sometimes we as human beings, we want those angelic visits to come at our beckoning. Oh, I want my angel to come and protect me. This is not the way it works. They were unexpected. These messages were always personally life-changing, but they would also alter humanity. These were a bigger message than the people that they were given to. They weren't about the recipients. They were about God's plan. 